This video is going to help explain how to find the missing dimension when you're given the area or perhaps the volume of a figure. So this evening let's just start with the idea of knowing that area equals base multiplied by height when we're talking about a parallelogram. So let's start with our parallelogram something like this. And I'm going to go ahead and say we don't know what the height is. And let's pretend that we know that the area, or we're told rather, that the area is 28 units. And that the base here is 7. So this is going to go into the idea of solving for an unknown variable or using our flowchart and backtracking. So if I know that my area is 28, I'm going to rewrite this problem showing 28 equals 7 multiplied by h. And if I wanted to, I can build that flowchart that would show our variable first. Multiplied by 7 gives me 7h. And then to backtrack, I know that I have 28. The opposite would be to divide by 7. 28 divided by 7 gives me 4. So this would say, or give me, that the height is 4 units. The same can be said if we're looking for the area of a triangle or working with the area of a triangle and trying to find an unknown value. So let's draw a triangle. Make it be a right triangle for right now. And honestly, it doesn't really matter. We can draw something that's a little bit more isosceles, where these two sides would be the same. Or we could even draw a scalene triangle where we're not having any of the angles or sides be the same. So you take your pick of which one we want to think about and let's just go ahead and remember that the formula for finding the area of a triangle is area equals base multiplied by height divided by 2. So on the right triangle base and height. On the isosceles triangle base Height is the perpendicular to the base from a vertex. And then on our scalene triangle, this would be the base. And then we have to draw our height kind of outside of our shape for the height. So on the next slide, I'll actually show you how to find the missing value considering one of these shapes. So on this particular triangle, we have a scaling triangle, our base and our height are going to be different as will that third or all three side lengths rather for the triangle. And our formula is still area equals base multiplied by height divided by two. So instead of having just a one step equation or formula to follow, this is actually two steps. So if I know my base and let's write in the height just to indicate where that would be. There's my height. So let's say that I know my base and I know the area of this scaling triangle, then I should be able to find the missing height. So let's understand or let's start with it. The area equals, hmm, let's say, 8 centimeters squared. And let's say for the sake that our base is going to be 3. So if our base is 3, then we're just going to go ahead and substitute in what we already know. So the area is 18. My base is 3 multiplied by a height and then gets divided by 2. So I'm going to draw my flow chart here just to show or remind us. We're going to start with h. 
the first thing that happens to h is gets multiplied by 3. We're left with 3h, and then it gets divided by 2. So my end circle gives me 3h divided by 2. Remember the 3 is in place of our b for base. And for this particular flowchart, we know that that equals 18. And now we're ready to backtrack. So the opposite of divide is to multiply by 2. 18 multiplied by 2 gives us 36. And then the opposite of multiply by 3 is to divide by 3. And 36 divided by 3 is 12. So for this triangle, my height is no longer just a variable of h, but my height would actually be equal to 12 centimeters here. So h equals 12 centimeters, base equals 3 centimeters, and you can always check your work by plugging into the formula that we started with at the beginning of the problem. The last type of problem that you're going to be finding a missing dimension for, missing uh, base area for, would be thinking about the volume of a rectangular prism. And the volume of a rectangular prism can be multiplied, or found rather, by multiplying length by width by the height. And sometimes this is considered to be the big B multiplied by H. Big B is going to represent the base area. And the base area in this diagram is going to simply be what makes up that two-dimensional shape of being length and width before we then finally multiply by the height or the number of layers that we find for that length and width. So if you were told that you had a volume here of, let's say, volume equals hmm, 60 centimeters cubed, and you wanted to find out what possible dimensions you have for length and width, because you already know that the height is, let's say, oh, we'll keep it simple. Let's go with 10. Okay, so if the height is 10, then we know that we can substitute in volume equals length times width times height. Volume is 60. Length, we don't know. Width, we don't know. And we know that the height is 10. So combined, we need to think about what can these two numbers be. And since we know that 10 times 6 equals 60, then you need to come up with some different options of what could your L and W be. So I know that 1 times 6 times 10 gives me 60. And I might also say that 2 times 3 times 10 will give me 60. So these two options, 1 for my length and 6, or 2 for my length and 3 for my width, would still give me a volume of 60.